to the cloud. Okay, so recording also. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Naman is having a question, sir. Yes. Who has a question? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, is there any difference be uh, between the project title and the project scope? Project title and the project scope. That's a good question. Um, so, in the case of the project title, project title will be just one sentence. So here. Um, for example, the project title would be Hong Kong Natural Gas Pipeline. That is like a title. Sometimes you might see in some projects, they have like a unique name. It's um, Project um, Alpha or Project, um, you know, they have a special name for it or a code name for it. Sometimes in like, if it's a secret project, they may have some other code word for it, right? So the title is usually just going to be a simple one liner, like a title you may say, and then it is a reference for every, you may be working on several projects, right? So usually the title is very short, it's just to the point, and it may have like phase one, phase two. So that will be in your title. In the scope statement, it is more like two, three, four sentences that tells us what is the, what is the actual work that has to be done in a simple, if somebody asks you, you're going on an elevator, you just have 20 seconds, you meet the chief executive of the company and the com chief executive says, hi, how are you? What are you working on? You say, oh, I'm working on a project. Oh, really, which project are you working on? So this is what you would say. You don't wanna tell the whole story. You just simply say, I'm working on this project. We are going to build a gas pipeline for this purpose, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you know, 30 second, it's called an elevator pitch. So the scope statement is like that. It's just one or two sentences, three sentences. Is that clear? Do you, are you clear about that difference? Yes, sir. Yes, yes? is that okay? Yeah, okay. All right, good. Any other question before we go on? Okay, all right, good. So that is the purpose of the scope statement. And we said in the WBS, once you have the scope statement, then you will make what is called a work breakdown structure. And the work breakdown structure, the main purpose of it is from the name, you can see you are breaking down the work into different categories, into different groups. And the main purpose of the grouping is to show who, who, which ones you can allocate to who. You need to divide the work into smaller pieces so you can assign them to different groups or different people or different teams. So that is the main purpose. It's not, so don't, uh, we'll go, we're discussing today in more detail about a uh, scope and about the schedule. In the schedule, you look at activities which are more detailed. Thus, the WBS is very high level. I told you example, usually it goes down one level and then two level, and that's about it. It doesn't go too much detail. The main purpose is that you just wanna decompose it down to the level so that you can give it to somebody, you can allocate it to somebody, to a group or a team. And we're gonna do this today. We will develop a simple WBS. I'll show you, I'll do an example, and then you guys will do it also in your breakout rooms. So we will do that, and then it can be decomposed further. And this is an example I showed you of the WBS. In the WBS, construction of the home is one, and all the activities are divided into three main categories. First of all, big categories. You have internal work to do, you have foundation work to do, you have external work to do, okay? Um, this is more of the execution. So as you can see, this is just work to be done, execution. One thing actually should be in here also added, which was in the next one. In this one, we have it here. You can see here, the project management activities are also added because you are, before you actually, you don't from day one, you start on the project, you don't start working on the house. You first have to do planning, right? You have to make, have the project charter. You have to remember the project management plan has all those plans in it. It will take you some time and effort and cost to make all those documents. So you should add that in your WBS also as one activity. So I would say it should also add that, but at, this is minimum, at least it shows the actual work you will do. Um, so that is also extra thing. I would say like additional should be there, but keep in mind that the purpose is to show 100% of the work, 100% of the work 
in the house? Is there some work to be done internal, some foundation and external? You obviously first need to do the foundation. In the foundation, two main things to do, excavate. Now the people who are the electrical people, they're not gonna do the excavation. The plumbing people are not gonna do the excavation. You need a big um, bulldozer, you need big equipment for that. You need to hire somebody to dig the hole in the ground and get all the utilities, you know, connections there, the main ones, right? Um, the electrical, the plumbing, the sewerage, everything, right? So the excavation is going to be a separate activity which you can assign to somebody. So that is one, we call it a work package. So anything that you can assign to one group that is called a work package. Example here is this, another example is steel erection, or if here you saw there, you're mainly using wooden beams. If it is a wooden structure or you're using chipboard, whatever drywall, that is your erection of the, of the walls and the shell of the house. Then you have internal work to do. You have electrical, you have plumbing. These can be assigned to electrical people. This is assigned to plumbing people. Then you have the brickwork to do. Again, the people, these they cannot do the masonry. You have to have somebody else come in and do the brickwork. Somebody else has to do the finishing. You may, so this is, that's the purpose of the WBS. And it's, as you can see, it's not, we don't put here, when you're painting the walls, we don't put what is the um, uh, what is the color you're going to paint, how many coatings you're gonna do. We don't put that here. We just say paint walls, that's it. It's very high level, just so they know. And then remember, when you do the work packages, more detail will be in your work, the work packages dictionary, in the WBS dictionary, right? So that was one structure I showed you as a chart it can come. The second way it can come is also as a table format. And in the table format, um, I think I might've shown you, I'll show you also. And you can show, you can look at it in Word as a multi-level list. You can make that easily in Word. When you click on next, you click on tab, it will automatically make this for you, the numbering. You don't have to type out the numbers. It will do that for you automatically when you put it here and you click tab. It will make this, this is one, this is 1.1, then 1.1.1, then 1.1.1, and then as you can see, numbering. So numbering is very important. This is example of a table format type for WBS, for a bicycle, where you have the frame, the crank, which is the pedals, the wheels, the braking system, the shifting, and then the projects activity that you have to do also. So this is also okay. So you can do either way. And then the dictionary has the detail about the work packages. So the work packages that you're gonna assign, if you say to somebody, you're gonna excavate for the house, they're gonna say, we don't know, what do you mean? So you need to give detail. So you will give detail about the work package that exactly specifications, the how much time they have, when they have to start, when they have to finish. You need to ask them, of course. Again, we'll talk about next in schedule. You can't just estimate it. You need to discuss with them. So you have a meeting with them. Okay, this is the work you need to do. How much time do you need? Uh, what is the cost also? Then you can start building up your WBS. Some things may be filled out. Some things you will put as a placeholder. Okay, they will get back to you about it. But you need to tell, we want you to do this in so much time. You should have a reasonable estimate of the time. Um, usually it's the first time, but you will have an idea about the estimated time. So you have to create, so there may be 10, 15, 20 WBS dictionaries, depending on the complexity of your project. Um, those are what you will have available. So you can provide them to your, um, to the people who will do the work. And so we will talk about next about the schedule, how to calculate the time. And we will talk about how to estimate the cost also. So those are the next two, three weeks we will be talking about in more detail, but once you have that information, you will put it into the WBS dictionary and you will provide that to the person or the team who's gonna do the work, okay? Um, and so we said the baseline, baseline is the standard or the reference. Something you look at again and again, you refer to, that is called a baseline. There's a scope baseline and later on we'll talk about there's also a cost baseline. So in the scope baseline, this is, formula, it's not a chemistry formula, it's not a, it's a simple project management formula or saying that in order to have the scope baseline, you'd have three things. One is the project scope statement, which is that one, two sentences. 
you need to have the WBS ready, which is the hierarchy, the breakdown of the work in either chart or table form. And you need to have all the WBS dictionaries. I would say dictionaries, not just dictionary, but the dictionaries of all the terminology, all the work to be done. So when you have that complete, that is your project scope baseline. That is the, the work that you need to do, right? And that is the actual, um, that is the work that you need to do. And you will refer to this again and again. It's not just you make it and forget about it. As we, when we go into executing, we do the project, every week you will refer to this. We have to do all this stuff. How much of this have we done? Each work breakdown structure, each WBS um, work package, how much have we done? Which ones are complete? Which ones are in trouble? That all you will be looking at regularly, okay? So this is the project scope baseline. And we said that mainly you do this during, you control, so the control scope and validate scope. So control scope is done internally by the team. They make sure you are, you as the project manager and the project team, you'll be checking and making sure all the work is complete. Don't forget, for example, I gave you an example in the home. If you forget to do insulation in one place, it affects the whole house the whole house, there will be leaking water, leaking hot air somewhere, there'll be cold air coming in, there'll be moisture coming in, there'll be mold issues. So that is to ensure that all the work is done properly. That is controlled scope. And validate scope is either customer or external. Could be your, if you have to, you know, with the construction, you have to get fire code approval, you have to get plumbing approval, you have to get electrical approval, gas approval, all those you know, certifications, all those permits, you have to get those passed. That is a validation. That is a validation of the scope that have you done it properly or not. So these both are later on, of course, once you do the work and you complete the work, then these are there. But first, of course, you need to plan for it properly. So any, so any question about what we discussed before, anything on this? Yes, any question? Okay, good. Um, so then it means we can go on to our next lecture, right? So we're going to talk about our schedule management now. Okay, so in the schedule management, <clears throat> again, a reminder about this every time, I'm gonna show this a couple times to you guys. Um, so project schedule, we have got five activities in planning and then one other control schedule. What is schedule? Schedule is your time, right? So the time for the project. How long will your project take? Of course, in your project charter, you would have given a little bit idea based on your knowledge, but now you have to go into more detail because by now you would have created the WBS. You have a list of all the activities to be done and now you can plan that what are the different activities that we need to do in order to complete this project? How much time will it take? So we will talk about these each activities and then there's control schedule. And as you can see, the next one is the cost also. So once you have the WBS, I said next you will do uh, time and you will look at cost because those are related to the work packages. So as you remember, we just finished this uh, plan scope management. There's planning, there's also the um, yeah, you make the scope statement and then in the, when you create the WBS, you make the WBS, you have the work packages and you make the WBS dictionary. So once you've done that, then you go on to your plan schedule management, define activities, sequence activities, estimate duration, and all these. So we'll talk about each of these in detail. So again, reminder, this is the steps you have done, you will be doing in your process. So you have defined the scope, collect the requirement from the client, find the scope, create the WBS dictionary and plan. And then you go to, once you're planning your schedule, then you define the activities, sequence activities, estimate, and then develop the schedule. So you cannot just go ahead and develop the schedule. You need to do all these activities before you develop the schedule. So usually if you think about it, like probably if you're given a project, you just, start thinking, okay, I have to do these activities. Um, I'm just gonna start, I think it'll take two weeks, you know, it usually is like that, right? So the proper way to do it is to follow this methodology. 
So um, all of you are in second semester, right? Yes, sir. So, you know, you might have seen in your course content in your fourth semester, you have a capstone project to do, right? Did you guys yes, see sir. your course? Yes, sir. So in the fourth semester, you're going to do a capstone project. And in that project, you will be given some, you know, project related to, of course, your um, technical course. But you should be following this methodology in that. When you do that project, you should create a scope statement. You should create a WBS, make a schedule for it, um, you know, define the activities for it. Um, then all the other things also costing for it. So that is, you should, this is the methodology. So this, of course, don't forget about these things. Like it's the second semester and the third semester, don't forget about it. It will come in handy in semester four in your capstone project. And then of course, when you go in the real world, like I mentioned, you may be working in a technical position and you may be told to work on a project temporarily for some time. So these things will be used there, these templates, these concepts or you may go into project management role. And then of course you will be using this daily basis. So in this way, these concepts should help you out in your career. So first one we said is define activities. So 6.1 in the first one, define activities. In this process, we determine the exact actions needed to be performed to create the product deliverables. So remember the product delivery is at the, deliverable is at the end, what you will be making, right? That is, could be a service, could be a product, could be also a um, result. And you have to determine what activities, what actions you have to do to meet that deliverable. So the main input for this process is scope baseline. So you remember the scope baseline has those three things, right? So the three things are the scope statement, WBS, WBS dictionary. So from there, you take that information and you define the activities. So remember the work packages are very like broad. They're not much detailed. You have some detail in the WBS dictionary, but in order to complete that work package, there's lots of activities you have to do, right? So, um, so you have to define those activities. And in the define activities, it decomposes the work packages into schedule activities. So we're actually, now we're going to more detail. Work package, I told you in the work WBS, you may be going down one or two level. Now you're going to more detail than maybe six activities, five activities for each work package. The main output is activity list and activity attributes. The activity duration is estimated from the activity list and activity attribute. So now you're gonna start thinking about each of these activities, how long do they take? So it's not, if you think about it, it's not just how long do they take, some things you can do parallel. Some things need to be completed first and then you can do the next. So let's talk about, okay, let's have a discussion. Do you guys remember um, when you applied for admission to Conestoga College, right? Not too long ago, last year right? Yes, sir. You had to do, so one of your, so there was a lot of things you had to do, right? You had to apply online. You had to get your documents. You had to do IELTS test also. You had to, um, you know, meet all the requirements for the admission, send in your maybe documents, etc. There were a lot of activities you had to do. Well, I would say work packages you had to do, right? You guys agree? There were like four or five main things you had to do, which were grouped together. Um, I would say application process. Then I would say your um, testing, IELTS testing, then your um, meeting, getting the other documents together for the application, paying the fees also, getting that, you know, the demand draft ready, the $10,000 deposit ready, right? So financial aspect, so those are like the main, I would say, work packages, right? And of course you had to do all of them, but maybe you could allocate them to somebody else. So those are your main activities. Those are your main, you can say work packages, okay? Now in that one work package, let's talk about doing your IELTS test. Everybody took the IELTS test, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the IELTS test, can somebody tell me what were the activities 
Can you tell me what were the activities for that? There was four module, writing, speaking, listening, and reading. So there's yes. writing, listening, speaking. So those were three modules in it. So what did you four. do to take the, did you have to do something to take that exam? A daily practice. Practices. Yeah. Sorry? And daily, daily practice, practice on this module. This is of all modules. Right. So before you practice, you had to enroll for it, right? Yes. Yeah. You had to enroll. So first of all would be, enroll in the get you know enroll in the IELTS test um, that you have to enroll to book your so you have to like get the course material right get yes. online access and get the or get the book right so something so one is enrollment second is you have to do your self study yourself you did some study maybe some of you did some of you go to like a tuition center did you do a tuition center yes sir So that could be the third activity to go to the tuition center also, you know, and prepare. Then once you're ready, then you will select your date for the test, right? Yeah. Yes. Then, you, then you book the test date that I'm ready now. I want to take the test, right? Yes. yes then you, so before the test, sometime it would be a good idea to go see where is the test location of the center. Maybe did you, did you drive by outside from it to see where it is before? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a, you don't want to be late. You want to see where is it? How will I, how much time will it take for me to get there on time? You don't want to be late to that, right? So yes. that could be another activity to go check out the center. And then you go and actually take the test, right? You have those three modules to take module one, two, three. You took the tests. And of course, you would mention you want the result to go directly to Conestoga College and other colleges. So as you can see in the one work package in the take IELTS test, in your work package, in your WBS, you will just say, take IELTS test, right? And mm -hmm. in the activities, you will put there, these are the things you have to do. If somebody asks you, your friend in India is asking you, I'm applying, I have to do the IELTS test, how do I do it? You will tell them these things. You have to enroll online, you have to go to some tuition center, you have to study on your own, you have to get the book from your friend or somebody, you have to book the test, you have to. So all those things are the activities. So this is what we're saying, that the activities are going to, the schedule activities are more detailed than the work package, okay? And so one is that you will define what they are. And second is you have to tell what is the logical relationship. So can you, so before you select the, so before you, um, so you have to select the date and the center, right? You cannot go and check the center out until you select the dates, right? Only once you select the date and the center, then you can go out and see where the location is. There's a logical relationship, right? Yes. And you cannot, you cannot go, suppose you want to go for the tuition center. They will say to you, okay, you cannot go for tuition center until you enroll in the IELTS test. You have to enroll and get admission to, you have to get admitted to, take the test and get the course material, then only you can go in the tuition center. So there's some relationships you have to define. If you're doing any project, then it's the activity, this is what we mean by activity logical relationship, okay? So mm -hmm. you have to define that in this, that what is the logical relationship between those activities? What are the constraints? So let's suppose IELTS test, you applied for it and you have to get it done by suppose November 5th, that is your deadline. If you delay that, then your admission cannot be approved. We have to wait for the next semester then, right? So there may be a constraint that you have to get it done by a certain date. Otherwise, you're gonna be in big trouble. Your whole project will be in big trouble. And you cannot get admission. It is a requirement. You cannot get admission without IELTS score, right? Yes. So, the, so this is what you have to define for every activity. What is the, and then the resource requirement, you have to pay whatever fee it was, two, $300, you have to pay for the tuition, you have to pay for the material, you have to, so there's a cost for it also, right? And so how much time will it take? How much time, how much regular is your tuition? How much regular did you go? Was it like uh, two, three days a week or what was the tuition, like what was the schedule? It was a five day a week uh, for three hours. 
yeah, so five days a week, three hours. So you have to block your time for that. So that is a like resource for that purpose, for that activity. So this is all we're saying here when you're defining activity, what is the input? You have to look at your scope baseline. You have to, so there from the scope baseline, you will get what are the work packages. And then you ask experts, just like your friend will call you that you're already in Canada. Can you tell me how you did the IELTS? You're an expert for them because you've been through it, right? And then, or they may, they may have meetings. So they can also, if you are there, you may have, you may have met somebody who already took the IELTS. You want to go meet your friend. Oh, you took the IELTS. Can you tell me about it? So you have meetings with them. So, and then as a result, you get a list of the activities, the attributes are the relationships, and then we'll talk about milestone and all these things. So this is next coming up. So this is the output of this define activity. So in the activity list, so since the WBS includes all the work to be done in a project, we can use WBS to create activity lists based on work packages like I just mentioned. And so this example I already mentioned to you, like if you have to go to the, if you apply, you have to have a work package called taking English proficiency test. And then you have all those activities there, like enrollment, tuition, spotting the location of the test center, scheduling the exam, taking the exam, et cetera. Those are your activities for that one work package. And then task dependency. For example, if you, you got your visa, you want to come to Canada, you must get your plane ticket, right? Of course, you have to get your visa. If, you're, if your passport expired, you have to renew, you have to get a new passport, you have to get your visa, then you have to get your ticket, only then you can come to Canada. So those are dependencies. You cannot skip one. You, if you don't have a passport, you can't get the visa, you can't get the ticket, right? You have to have all three. So those are task dependencies that you have to define for the tasks. Task constraints. If, you're, if you need material on a certain date, if you are going to install the machine and for the installation, you need a certain equipment or you need certain equipment or a material and then otherwise you cannot install the machine. So task constraint means you must have something available in order for that task to be done. So that is a task constraint. And task assumption is you will say, assuming everything is as per normal. So if you go to replace the tire, you go to a place and you ask them, uh, I wanna change my tires, my snow tires to the regular tires. Uh, the mechanics say, okay, if the wheels are okay, everything is all right. It can take me half an hour, 45 minutes. Can you wait? Yeah, okay, I'll wait. Now that's assuming everything is okay. If there's some problem, if your wheels are not aligned or the wheels have some trouble or there's other issues with your um, you know, whole chassis or something, then this estimate will not be valid. So the assumptions are assuming there's no problem such as blah, blah, blah. So that is your task assumption. Right, so of course, this is all in planning. You, you're you doing this activity before you're actually starting the work. So we are assuming some things also. So you should know the definition, what is task dependency, what is task constraint, what is task assumption. Okay, any question on this? Is it clear? Yes, sir. All right, good, thank you. So once you have the list of activities, now next is sequence the activity, 6.2. Sequence the activities, you are going to create a network diagram. Okay, so uh, we will talk about the network diagram in more detail, but for now, you just need to understand that it is a, you will bring together all of the different activities into a diagram, which shows input, shows output, shows different tasks, some which are overlapping, some which are finished first and the second. So that is, that is the purpose of sequencing the activities. Like we said, you need to do something first, you need to do something second, so that is a sequencing. And again, here your inputs are your baseline, usually that is the baseline. Um, the, there are different ways you can make the diagram. We're not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but next class, we will talk about the critical path, and that will be um, based on the diagram, which you made. So. We'll talk about it in more detail next, but just understand here that, so we'll talk about in the next slides, what is a lead and lag. And the output of that is you have a network diagram. So I will explain that to you, but this is the activity, the sequence activities that you do. Um, and the output of this is the product schedule activity network, the network diagram. 
So this is an example of a sequencing activity. So what this means is you're beginning the project and this is one task or something you have to do. B is another one, C is another one. So each of these are different activities you have to do. So when you're beginning the project, you have to do activity A, you have to do activity H, and you have to do activity K. So three activities you have to start on at the same time, okay? Then once you complete A, then you start working on B. Same thing when you complete H, you start working on F and you start working on C. And K, you complete that and then you start working on I and L and H also. I'll explain that what SS means and FS means shortly. But this is the flow diagram and this says that you cannot finish the project until you complete all of these activities. You have to have completed A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, up to K. All these activities you have done, each of them, then only your activity, your whole project will finish. So this again is your scope and this is your sequence of activities. It could be your project or it could be one work package. It's also possible it's your work package that has a lot of activities in it. Right, so um, this is the purpose of the schedule diagram. It helps us to visualize the activities in a logical way. And um, I will show you how we can make this also diagram and everything. Um, so the SS and the FS, um, those I'll explain here. The start to start and finish to start, finish to finish, there are different activities. This SS means start to start. So I'll explain that here. And then this, this FS means um, finish to start, FS is here, okay? So these I will explain, but that what means is if you look from the diagram, SS means these two activities have to start at the same time. That is what SS means. B and C, you have to start at the same time, right? So um, if you're going to be doing, for example, the painting, and also you're going to be installing the you know, power switches also. Once you do the painting, you have to also do something along with it at the same time. That's start to start relationship, okay? And finish to finish relationship. So I'll explain that to you. So, so let's like take a look here. I think this is easy to understand. So the dependencies are, there are mainly these four dependencies and then we also talk about lead and lag. So activity A, you finish activity A and then you start activity B. This is very common, obviously, right? You have to um, complete your this course. You have to complete this course. You have to complete all the courses in your this semester, and then you will be able to graduate from this term. And you complete all the courses in your in your program, then you will get the certificate for this program. So that is obviously finished to start. You have to finish all those and then you can start the next. You cannot go to the next term. You cannot go to term three until you finish term two, unless of course you take that later. But uh, so that is an example of finish to start. Any activity that has to be finished before the next one starts. That is a finish to start relationship. Start to start, so like I mentioned, two activities start at the same time. That is activity A and B S S relationship. Finish to finish is two activities finish at the same time. And then start to finish and not used very commonly, but here again, you have to start an activity as soon as another is completed. Um, so this is again, like, you know, this is um, different here. So you start an activity as soon as another finishes. So this is the other, like other way around of that. So I'll show you examples in the next slide we have yeah, we have these examples here. I'll show you. Let's take a look at these examples before I go to lag and log. So activity A, let's take a look at this one. Finish the start link. Task B cannot start until task A is done. This is common, typical, default in most products. Example, dig foundation must be completed before you can do pour concrete. You have to first obviously dig, then you can pour the concrete. So it's a finish to start activity and this is shown like this way, the arrow. So as you can see, arrow comes out from the end of A and it goes to the start of B. This shows us it is a FS relationship. The another example is the uh, an 
any manufacturing line what do you mean manufacturing line example uh like we have to make any uh, any part in the manufacturing line so one process is done uh, until that another process can't be started yes you can say that it depends if it is so if it is like food industry it's a continuous flow but you're right if it is batch making if you have one part if you're making it if you're in an auto company and you make one part and you are going to do like tooling you're going to use do it on a lathe machine and then it's completed then only you can go to the next station right yes sir yes sir so that is yes you're right that is example of finish to start the other person cannot start their work until you finish right good yes and then start to start link so this one is the start to start link where you are going to be task b can start until task a starts they don't have to start at the same time task b can start any time after task a so it means you start on a and then you can start on b you cannot start on b until a is started to save time you want to level concrete at one end of the foundation while it is still being poured at the other end so you are you know you're pouring the concrete so you have a big like you know room to fill the concrete on the floor you are pouring on one side and you are leveling it out as you are going along so that is a you're doing it together but you're not you're not doing it exactly at the same time first you pour maybe half of it you start leveling it and then you pouring at the rest of the other side also so they are start to start link okay so they are sort of i would say done simultaneously together but they don't have to start at the same time okay and then finish to finish task b cannot finish until task a is done so they don't have to they don't have to end at the same time task b can end at any time after task a ends so here also you have got the um so task b can't so task b can't finish until task a is done so both of them are usually going to finish same time so your team is adding wiring to the building and inspecting it at the same time so let's suppose you are there are five rooms and you're putting electrical wiring in all five rooms and you do wiring for first two three rooms and then some reason you're late or whatever and the inspector comes over and the inspector says i'm here for the day um you're supposed to finish this today i don't have time to come back and you say okay why don't you start on room number 1 and do room number 2 and 3 i'm going to do room number 4 and i'll finish room number 5 by the time you come over to the next room so you will both finish at the same time approximately right so this is a finish to finish link that is um you are adding wiring and then inspection is also starting and they both you can, so the inspector cannot finish until you finish all the wiring right if you don't finish all the wiring the inspector cannot finish his work that day if you do only four rooms he can't finish his inspection is not a, i'm not going to give you inspection report and then he has to come back again right so this is an example of a finish to finish link is that clear about finish to finish link right so please one more time yes so you have five rooms for electrical installation and you are installing electrical wiring and and you've done three rooms and on that day the inspector is supposed to come and inspector comes to check out your wiring and he says i can't finish today i'm not going to start because you haven't done the you haven't done the wiring yet but you say to him that okay it's only going to take me 1 hour to do this room 1 hour to do this room so you can start on the room number 1 and then do room number 2 do number 3 and i will finish these other two rooms while you are doing inspection of these rooms so maybe his inspection is going to take maybe half an hour 45 minutes so you are going to finish both at the same time the inspection is going to finish at the same time and your electrical wiring is going to finish at the same time or they are both linked at they are linked through the finish they they don't have to start at the same time but it's the requirement is they have to finish together he cannot complete inspection until you finish the wiring is that clear okay sir perfect yes. thank you okay good sir is that uh, but sir two works are uh, joined together sorry say that again 
Is it that uh, two activities are come together? Yes, so here you see A activity and B activity. They are coming together, but we don't show it as like two arrows and one arrow going. We show as one arrow. This means this finishes here. See the arrow is at the end here. Here the arrow was at the start. So the okay. arrow is at the end of this activity and it is touching this end of this activity. So this okay. shows a finish to finish relationship. This shows a start to start relationship. So here. finishing time is varying. Yeah, the operation time is varying. It doesn't mean that these both have to be the same time. You see, this is like shorter, this is longer. It doesn't matter. One is, you know, started first and this starts later, but they have to finish at the same time. They are dependent on each other rather. They, you cannot finish this activity A until this is finished also. They are linked together. Okay. Okay, sir. And then finish the start. This is not commonly used, but this is a task B cannot finish until task A begins. So this one is showing here task B cannot finish and it is dependent on A starting. So example, the roof trusses for your building are built offsite. You can't assemble the roof. You can't finish assemble roof until the delivery begins. So let's suppose you are going to put up, this is the trusses is the support for the roof the wooden, you know, like the supports. So those wooden supports are going to come from, let's suppose you're doing the construction in Kitchener. They have to come from, uh, from suppose Toronto. And you have to wait till the delivery begins. You, in the morning, you call their office, you ask them, yes, are you loading the truck? Are you bringing the trusses to the gate? They'll say, yes, he's loading it now. So you're waiting and then you call them, yes, the truck is on the way, truck is out. He, the truck will be there in about one hour in Kitchener. So then you know that you can, you can assemble the roof, you can start getting it together because you know that delivery is going to be happening today, right? So you cannot, you cannot um, finish your task until A begins, right? You can only finish, so the, you can't finish, the roof. in this case, B is your assembling the roof. You cannot finish it until the delivery starts. If they don't deliver, if they say, oh, sorry, our truck is, you know, has a flat tire today, our truck is, we can't, we can't deliver today, you cannot finish the activity. You have to wait until that starts, the delivery starts, only then you can finish your installation of the roof. So it is a start to finish relationship. Okay, this is not very commonly used. More of these three are mainly used, but this can also happen. Okay, so in this diagram, like we were seeing here, this is, uh, let's take a look at this one. So here we can see this is start to start relationship. So B and C have to start at the same time. Okay, and then here your, this is start to start plus 10 days. So from the start of this, after 10 days you have to wait 10. So this could be, suppose you're pouring concrete. You cannot start on this one until 10 days after that. So you have to wait 10 days for the concrete to fix, and then you can, you can start on that one. So these that we're talking about here, um, this is also other thing that we need to talk about is called a lead and a lag. So lead is going to be example. So punch list, what is a punch list is you're doing an inspection. You're doing an inspection of a, of a um, building that newly constructed one that is called a punch list where you, if there's any defects, you will note it down that this is the defect. So that is a punch list. And you cannot complete that list until everything is done, but you have to wait. So there's a two weeks lead before you do the landscaping. So you're not going to do the landscaping until all the work is done. Let's suppose you, um, so they're gonna inspect the siding of the walls of the building. They're gonna check the roof. Now something is wrong with the roof or something is wrong with the, with the siding, aluminum siding. Now they have to fix it. Now they have to bring in heavy equipment again. If you do the landscaping, then if you put the grass there, it's all gonna get messed up. They have to bring in the you know, heavy equipment. So you probably saw that the last thing they do when they build a home is to do put in the grass, right? Because then they're not gonna bring in any heavy equipment. They don't have to bring on the other side, like in the back or any heavy equipment. So landscaping is done at the end. So there's like a two week lead. Once you they do the inspection and they get the okay report, 
then only they will do the landscaping just to make sure there's nothing outstanding. So that's a lead. And the lag is some things you can do together. Um, examples, do we have explanation here? No, we don't have explanation, okay. So in the case of this one, you're writing the draft and you're editing the draft. So you're writing a report. So when you're writing the report, you can write the report and you can start editing also after 15 days. So you're starting to write the report. And so start to start relationship is that once you are writing it, then think of it as it's like, a, it is, this is actually it's very similar to start to start. This one here, if you see, this is start to start, meaning both of them start at the same time. Here, it's a start to start with a lag of 15 days. This is going to start 15 days after you started on this one. So once you're writing the draft of the book, you're writing a, typing a, out an article, and then 15 days after that, you can start editing the book. So this is a, a lag that is, it is later, a later time after you start this activity. So this is another relationship sometime that we show, and this is showing you here. Um, the example would be, yeah, this is the, the lag. So, right, so this would be the lag example, SS plus the 10 days. So these are things you should keep in mind in terms of the dependency. So when you're making the network diagram, you have to make sure that you are clear about these in terms of the different dependencies. Uh, and then you can, you can create the schedule properly, right? That's the purpose is to make a proper flow diagram, proper schedule. And this will affect your final result. You see, not all the activities are done one by one by one. A lot of them are done simultaneously. Some start at the same time, some finish the same time, some are done together, some are starting a little later than the other one. So that will affect your total time for the project, right? So we will take a look at how you develop the schedule with that information. So when you're developing the schedule, so now we talk about two things. Um, so once you develop the activity list and the activity attributes, that is what is the dependencies, the constraints, um, duration estimate for activities and activity network diagram. So these are the most important in creating the schedule. Now you can start allocating resources. Now you can say, okay, I need one person to do this. One, I need three, four people for this. I need certain equipment. So now you can, once you have the list of activities, now you can think about resources, people, right? And also material and other costs. So then you can start creating the schedule and creating a resource calendar. We call it resource calendar because it shows how many people do you need on every day. It shows how much material you need on every day. So that resource calendar gives us information, but you can only do that if you make the proper network diagram. And of course, there is software for that. I will show you some software shortly about that, you can use MS project software, you can use Excel also, you can use other software, a lot of software is available, uh, but we'll mainly focus on Excel and we'll focus on um, MS project. In this course, you don't have to create anything using MS project. Um, it is more in, in advanced project management courses. You might've heard in School of Business um, there you have to use MS project for the assignments. You have to use other things, but here we're, I'm going to show you MS project, but you don't have to do an activity on MS project, but almost, I would say 70, 60, 70%, everything you can do in Excel. Also there are templates in Excel. So uh, more or less it will serve the purpose also. Excel has a lot of templates available also. So when you make the schedule, two things to remember, one is called crashing and fast tracking. Sometimes, so many times it happens. Um, those of you who did the projects, um, was any of your projects late? You guys mentioned some of the projects you did like um, installing solar panel, the solar cell measuring system, diesel generator. Was it, were any of your projects late or were they on time? The installation of the cables, was that on time? Yes. Anybody? So there are, there are usually some delay in the project. See? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so sometimes 
I was uh, I was in a solar project. Uh, sometimes it happens that a uh, solar panel uh, delivery late delivery. Right. Uh, yes. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and sometimes so uh, government uh, allowances and uh, many other problems come yes. when you are doing actually. A lot of factors. Yes. When you have to get government approval, your right takes a long time. You send them the information. You don't hear anything. You call them. You send them email. You remind yeah. them, you try to go to their office and, you know, people, you know, for some reason, they'll take a lot of time. Yes. You're right. So that could be one reason. Other reasons. So these delays, when that happens, then what can you do with your project? Two things you could do um, with your project. So once you get the approval, once you have to work and you, so remember we said you have to look at the baseline, the, the, um, your scope baseline every week, almost at least every week to see how much work you've done, how much is left, how much time is left. So if you are behind, then one thing you can do is you can do what is called crashing. Crashing is meaning adding resources to shorten the schedule. So this example here of crashing is you have one, two, three activities to do and you have two people doing it, okay? And then here, four, five, six, seven, you have two people. You have eight, nine, 10, you have two people to do it. So under the normal project plan, you had five activities this one person was doing. You had 10 activities this one person was doing. You had 15 of these three, five activities. This, so you had three people doing all these activities. In the crashing, you put in extra resources. You put more people in instead of one. Now you, you hire a co-op student from Conestoga College, right? So you will hire them for three months, for six months, and they will help out in the project. And so you will do you will do these activities faster. Same thing here, same thing here. But of course you need more money to do crashing. You need, it's a higher cost, right? Sir, so uh, yeah. if, there is a, if there is a project delay two, three months, so, and it is a change or we have to add crashes over there, crashing over there, add more resources. So if you're, so see, if your project is being delayed, so you already are, you know that you suppose you are supposed to, what you have done it is now week three and you've only done activity that should have been done in week two. So you are one week behind. So now you need extra resources to push your activities faster, right? So usually if you are monitoring and controlling every week, you will know right away that, okay, I'm behind a little bit and you may need one, two weeks help temporary. So you can hire somebody temporary, you know, you can always get temporary people for two, three weeks for a couple months maybe, and you can do crashing. So it's not at the end, this is during the activities in the middle every week, you may need to do some crashing. Is that clear? Does that answer your question? Sir, but sometimes there is a problem due to the uh, labor strike and labor strike over there. They, do, they are not providing new work due to some issues. So they, uh, so in this way, uh, project is a delay due to four, three months, uh, two, three months. So in this way, uh, so that's why. Means, so uh, yes, we have to... so, okay, so if there's a labor strike or if there's like you saw here, there was, you know, bus strike. Natural, natural disasters over there, over there sometime. Yes. So this is, so that is actually related to one knowledge area is risk management. Okay, we will talk about that later on, but in the risk management, what you will do is you will plan, in the planning, we have to make a list of what can go wrong. What is possible? It's possible there could be strike from the, from the bus. There could be possible that our shipment of raw materials delayed. There's possible our approval of the government is delayed. There's possible people can get sick, the coronavirus people didn't know about, now it's a new risk, right? So there, there's a whole list of things that can go wrong, which can delay your project. You need to have contingency plans. You need to have a plan in place. If this happens, this is what we will do, okay? So that is a, that you would have already planned for accordingly. Um, so that if it arises, then you will implement your um, contingency plan. Does that make sense? Is that okay, clear? thank you. Right? Yes. So yeah, you, you have to do that planning and the risk management for any upcoming risk which may arise, right? Okay. 
so that was crashing. One thing you can do is add more people and obviously there'll be higher cost. This is crashing. The second thing you can do is called fast tracking, parallel or overlapping activities, moving activities to earlier start date, but there's an added risk. <laughs> In the case of fast tracking, you will still have three people. You don't add more people, but you make them do work together simultaneously, same time. So if you're late on building the house, you say, okay, painting guys, you're gonna come in, flooring guys, you're gonna come in also, the plumbing people are gonna come in also, electrical people, they all, two, three people, instead of only painting guys and then only the electrical people, then only plumbing people, you bring them, you say, okay, he's just about finishing in two days, he's also gonna start his work, um, so you bring them in parallel and there's overlapping, but there's a risk there. Suppose the person has to do the painting and the other guy is doing the flooring and he has to put his ladder there. He can't put his ladder because he's doing the flooring. So there will be you know, conflict then also, right? So <clears throat> you can also do overlapping, but then there's added risk also here. This is called, so this is, these both activities are called schedule compression. So those are ways how you can manage your schedule if you are late, right? If you, so this is why it's important. Every week you're going to look at your scope baseline. What are the activities we have to do? What are the work packages we have to do? How much have we completed? What is left over? What is critical? Which ones? So that is, you have to do that regularly every week. Then you can see if you need to hire somebody temporary or you need to move some activities parallel, then you can do that accordingly. So is that clear? Okay, so it's 1.15. Um, does anybody want a break? Nobody wants a break? Hello? Anybody want a break? Uh, no, sir. It is okay no, to continue. Sorry? Uh, you okay. Don't... okay, so we were um, discussing about this here, developing the schedule. And uh, let's just finish this up and then. Oh, okay, sir. All right, so the, um, yes, so let's finish this up and then I'll come back to the lead. So the purpose here of developing the schedule is that you, if you need to, you can do crashing or fast tracking. These will help to shorten the schedule. If you have a delay in the schedule, then you can do some of these activities together, okay? So there's several, so once you have all that activity list and you have the dependencies, there are several types of plans or schedules you can make. So uh, we'll talk about three of them examples. One is this milestone plan. Second is a summary schedule. Third is the detailed chart or the Gantt chart. So I'll talk about all three and I'll try to explain about lead and lag there also with those so you can understand. So first, once you make the plan, one type of plan is called a milestone plan. What is a milestone? Milestone is a special date or a special time on which you certain you finish certain activities or certain steps in your project. That is a milestone. Just like when you're driving on the road, you're going to Toronto and there's a sign there that says Toronto, 25 kilometers left. So that is a milestone. Same thing here, it tells you where are you in time. So example here, you have 2000, so it's a long project, 2015, 16, 17, 18. So it's a long project. So from 2015 till quarter um, four of 2017, this is like phase one, right? Um, in 2016, they're not gonna do anything. It's just in quarter four, one, two, three, four. Okay, maybe this actually should be 2016. Okay, anyways. So there's, there's no, so this is here. The first milestone is January 15 in quarter one of 2017 right? And then the next milestone is here, March 1st. So these are milestones, it's meaning special dates when a certain activity or phase will be complete. So this whole project, there's phase one, then there's phase two, and then there's phase three. So sometimes if you have a long project, which is a couple years, you can break it down to phases also. And um, in this case, mainly you, you don't have a list of the activities, but that you show on this but you can put there, for example, if you are, let's suppose you're digging the channel. This is a big project, three-year project where you have to dig a channel and you have to lay a gas pipeline. 
So phase one could be you have to do all the excavation. You have to dig out all the, you know, um, channel for the for the big uh, pipeline, and then you and then this is the installation here. You're doing the installation, and then you are covering up the channel and finishing it off, testing it also. That is phase three, right? So in this case, what you're doing is you're just showing the main, main important dates. That's what some milestone plan is. Who is this important for? Top management. They just want to know. They don't care. Oh, we had this trouble. We had that trouble. They want to know the milestones. Are you meeting those milestones or not? If you are late, if you if this milestone four is September 27th, if you are late, if that's going to be suppose mm, November first week, if you are delayed till then, maybe it's okay. Your next milestone is on November 7th. Maybe it doesn't really matter too much. You still can, but you may not have enough time to do the next activities. Or if it is delayed, then all these are going to be delayed. So. Most of the time, the top management, they just want to know what are your milestones. So you should have some important dates in your whole project. And you can just show it on this type of chart. And uh, that way, if you are late on any of your milestone, then you may want to do your compression, your crashing, or your fast tracking. Then you can do that. So this is one way. But as you can see, it doesn't give you a lot of activity information. Um, but you can develop this based on your schedule network that you made. The second one is called a summary schedule. The summary schedule shows the um, actual, some of the activ activities you need to do. And it shows the duration of them. For example, this is for a product launch. So for the product launch, you have got to do a market analysis about seeing what is the, what is the potential for that product in the market. So that is market analysis. Then you have the business plans to do. And you can along so this, as you can see, is there is a so this is a, like a start to start, um, and this has a lag here, or this has a lag because there you can start it a little bit later, right? So this one it doesn't have to start at the same time. The projections can come once you have the business plan in place, and then it finishes later. Um, and so here you decide based on the business plan, based on the projection. Projection is. Are we going to make enough profit after four or five years or not? That is the projection. So then you make the decision, go or no go. Either yes, we're going to launch the product or no, we're not going to launch the product. And if you have a go, of course, then you make the pr project, uh, the market requirements, the price definitions, you review it. And finally, you have a launch. This is a launch is beta is more like a small pilot. You only launch it, maybe launch the product in just Toronto or just one city, you launch it there, you don't go a whole nation. That's a small launch. And then you see what is the response of the customers, and then you make it final approved for a whole of the Canada or all of the whole area. So, and then you do the PR blitz, the, you know, so this is, so these, this type of uh, milestone, well, actually it is like a, you can say activity network diagram, it's called a summary schedule. And the benefit here is you can see the activities and here also the stars are actually milestone. Like here you have a star. Actually, these are like milestones. The go, no go is a milestone. You want to complete the business plan and have the projections available so that you can make the decision in mid-March or end of March. You see, let's suppose this is a orange juice or something cold ice cream. You want to launch it in May, April, May, June, July, you saw here, May 11th, we had snow. Only now the weather is getting a little better. You want to launch it in June, July, right? If you're delayed, then if that milestone is pushed, then you, if you launch it in September, it's going to be useless. People don't want to drink cold juice or eat ice cream in November here, right? So the purpose here of this is, again, you're looking at the milestones, you're looking at activities, how long each activity is going to take. So you can make this type of summary schedule. So that is also possible. Yes, any question on this? Oh, I'm not sharing the screen. I'm sorry. Am I really? I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing the screen. You should tell me. If I forget to share the screen, let me know, please. Sorry. I'm sorry if I'm not, I wasn't doing that before. 
I'm getting old. Let me know if I do that again. But I was just, this was the only, if you didn't see this, the milestone plan I showed before, the milestone plan shows you the main key dates, which are important for the whole project. Okay, those dates are in the milestone plan. It doesn't really show you the activities. You have phase one, phase two, and phase three. Okay, so that is the milestone plan. I was showing you milestone schedule. And this is the summary schedule, which I showed you that you have got different activities and the length of these um, bars indicate to you, like this is January, this is February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. So you, if this is a cold product, you want to launch it in the winter and the summer months, right? You don't want to do it in the winter. So you want to launch it in May. So that's a launch. That is your like target. But you have, before the launch, you have to do all these activities. You need to have a business case. You need to have projection about the expected sales. You need to have a definition of the price. How much is the price going to be of the product, right? And you need to have the information about the market and customer profile. Then only you can do the launch, right? And of course, the R&D people will make it. So the um, so that is the launch. Um, you can say milestone also. And so in this case, uh, it, this is the other example, which the second one we said that you can make a schedule. Uh, this is a software, but you can also make it in PowerPoint. It's not that difficult to make it in PowerPoint. So you can do it that way also. I'll show you that shortly also. And you can make it in Excel also. Almost everything you can do in Excel and PowerPoint if you know how to do it. Um, all right, and then this is the third one. So this is the delayed, the detailed one, which is called detailed schedule or also known as Gantt chart. Gantt chart is, again, you cannot create this until you actually know all the activities you're going to do. This example is for, in the case of um, constructing a laboratory, an R&D laboratory. So you have a project start and you see zero days. When you have zero days, it means it is a milestone. It comes up as a diamond. The diamond shows the milestone, 3, 11, March 11, you're going to be starting the project. So there's two main sections. One is facility preparation and the other is equipment. Let's suppose you have an old um, room with a, which has a lot of junk in it and that room is just being used as storage room. You want to take out all that stuff. You want to clean it up. You want to make it into a laboratory. So this is the facility preparation section. You have to, so there's a kickoff meeting. You empty and clean the room. You paint the room. You install new lighting, install new lab. And uh, there's a fume hood, which fume hood is for, if you know, for pouring different chemicals, you need an exhaust. So it's a huge, like an exhaust fan. And then, and so you clean the lab and now the lab is ready for equipment. So as you can see here, this arrow shows you, this is a finished to start relationship. You have to clean the room, only then you can paint it. You cannot paint the room before you clean it, right? You have to clean the room and then paint it. Then once you paint it, then you can install the lighting. Um, it would be hard to install it, I guess, before the painting, or maybe you wanna do it before you have to discuss and see. And then you install the benches, and then, so now this fume hood is the equipment. You cannot install the equipment until it is ordered and it comes, right? So for all the equipment, this is the next section is the equipment. So in the equipment, you have to specify what equipment do you need based on how much space you have, based on what testing you need to do. You need to get the requirements from quality control. What tests do they wanna do? What equipment do they need, right? So that is your customer requirement gathering. And then you're going to send out the quotations to the different companies, get at least three, three quotations. You receive the quotations, evaluate them, you place the order for the equipment. So as you can see, these activities are also done, finish to start, right? Now, here you have a milestone also. Milestone is equipment on order. You send out the order for the equipment on, the, on uh, May the 29th. So once the delivery is there, so delivery, is going to be, so delivery is going to be on May the 29th, right? So May the 29th, you have delivery. And on that date, then you can, so sorry, yeah, here, this is 56 days, yeah. On May 29th, you have order the equipment and 
Now, once it's delivered, then you can install the fume hood. So this is dependent, as you can see, this is dependent on that. Once the delivery is done, then only you can start the fume hood installation, and then only you can complete it. So as you can see, some activities are parallel. You don't have to clean the room and have it ready, then order the equipment. You can order it before. So it's not all a relationship of one after the other. Sometimes there is some things which can be done parallel. Some things are dependent on another, right? It doesn't really matter if you're cleaning or if this is delayed. It doesn't really matter if this is affected by it or not, right? And then you finally have the whole, you know, lab is ready to be uh, handed over. Once you have installed equipment and once you have delivery of the equipment and installed it, set up the lab, then it's ready for the purpose of this year, right? So, um, so that's the summary schedule. I wanted, so I'm going to show you an MS product and I'll show you, I'll explain the lead again also in more detail, lead and lag also, hopefully that should make it understanding it a little bit more. Um, so the yeah, let me share my screen here. Yeah, this is the one I think same one that we saw before. So I can show you that here. Okay. Okay, you guys see my screen, the MS project, right? So this yes, software is MS project software, like the one I showed you already, right? So as you can see, it is just like Microsoft Excel, but it has a lot of different things in it. Um, and this is showing you all those I just already mentioned. And I just wanted to show you, for example, this is this has a start date, and then there's also an end date for it, right? And if we are if we delay any of these activities, it will affect our overall end date, right? And so some items we have here, yeah, this is like a fin equipment on order. This is a finish to start activity here, yes. So actually lab startup, yes, set up equipment is going to be May 13. Yes, so here you see this, let's say suppose here equipment on order. So what I wanna show you is you can put dependencies. You see here, seven and 15. What does seven and 15 mean? This means you cannot install a fume hood until you install the new benches. This is what seven means. This is called a predecessor. Predecessor is what is happening before this, um, what, is, what is essential for, what is it dependent on? So the benefit of MS project is in this way, is that you can um, show the dependencies. And we're also saying 715, 15 number is equipment on order. Actually, this should be based on delivery of the order. You need to do it based on 16, not 15. So if I make that correction here, I can say that, okay, I need to do this based on um, 16, not based on that, right? So predecessors, I'm saying here based on 16. Okay, I'll show you what that happens. So if I change it to 16 here, then now you can see here, this is shifting ahead, okay? Now everything, now once you have the delivery of the equipment, then you can only do the installation of the fume hood and then your, and then your lab will be ready um, for use, right? So this shows you how, and then it will show you when is your product completion date. So it is going to be June 21st, it'll be ready based on this information, right? Um, this here, why does it do that? Okay, I don't think we need these, let me just, um, so this is here, you can do like, yes, let's do like that here. Yeah. So, sorry, you had any question? So this here at the end is not good either. This, um, the end is not going to be on this date. This should be, the end should be on that date, which is a predecessor is going to be actually um, number 20, right? You see, you need to understand how to set these all up, right? So you can just say here, predecessor is going to be 20. So this one to give you a flavor and idea about how you can, first of all, you need to know how to set up the activities, right? And then once you have the activities, then you can set it up accordingly um, and show this one here. Let me just move that over here. So the, um, okay, here we go, position. 
position. Let's do it ID number um, 25. Let's do 25 because I want to move it down. Okay, all right, doesn't exist. All right, let's do a number 10. 10. So the purpose of this here is that you can move this around wherever you want it to be, but, um, or rather, you know what, I'm gonna let's just delete it for now, it's getting in the way. So the purpose of showing you all this is that um, the, all right, let's go up to one. Okay, that's better. So the purpose of showing you this is that the Gantt chart gives you a picture overall of the whole project. It shows the relationships between the different activities and it shows the relationship here. You can show it as a um, finish to start, start to finish or other relationship. Um, if you want to show it as a, so let me just, let's do that. Okay, if you want a lead or lag, Let's do that here. See here, this is the type, okay? So now you can show here, these are the types of activities, right? So start to finish, finish to start, start to, start to finish. So you can define which one you want here, right? So this is how you can set up the dependencies. And as you can see here, they have lag, right? So lag, you can set up the lag minus one week, minus two week as an example. Let's suppose I put a minus two week here, okay? So now we can see here, install Fumehood. If I put a minus two weeks, it will bring it back two weeks. Yeah, it will, now it's dependent on that for two weeks, four. So this is, the purpose of showing you this is just to give you a flavor about what is MS project, what you can do with it. Um, so the purpose is to create a schedule and the schedule that I showed you here, um, the main purpose is just for you to be clear about how to understand, take a look at the schedule and read the schedule properly, right? Um, so your question about the lag and lead, let me just bring this up here again, um, show the screen. Yes, um, share screen. Okay, so the the schedule that I showed you is the same one as this one, right? And you're, so you had a question about lead. So your question was about lag and lead. So lead here, we said lead is, for example, here, two weeks lead. It means that you have to, so you're, you have to, you cannot finish this. You can't, sorry, you cannot start the landscape building lot until you complete this, but you have to wait two weeks after the punch list. So when they do, when they do the inspection, they complete the, the problem list. There usually will be some problems in the home they have to fix, right? And it can take them two weeks to fix it. So once they do the, inspection, you have to wait two weeks and then only you can start doing the landscaping. So that is a lead, okay? It's a lead. Um, so as you can see, lead happens. You have to complete one activity and then you can start the other after some time. So this is the difference between the lead and the lag. The lag is you start an activity and then you can later on after 15 days, you can also start another activity, but you have to wait till this is started. Here, you have to wait till this is finished. Then only you can start this. So that's the difference between the lead and the lag. Yes, is that more clear now, hopefully? Yes, um, who had the question about that? So, yes. Yeah, is that clear now? The difference? Yes. All right, good, yes. thank you. Okay, let's do our activity now. So I know you guys enjoy the activity, so let's do that. Um, the purpose of this is to make you understand how to do a, so let me stop the sharing, and how to do a work breakdown structure, okay? And uh, the purpose of that is just to give you a clear idea on that. So everybody hopefully is on their laptop, right? 
So if you're not on your laptop, then you won't be able to benefit out of this. But the purpose is to show you how to use, how to create a work breakdown structure. So I need you guys to open up a blank presentation in PowerPoint. So open up a blank presentation in PowerPoint. So I'll show you, you can walk along with me and then I will send you in your breakout rooms. You will create it on your own. I'm going to show you one example and then you will create it in your own breakout rooms. You'll do that for 15 minutes. Okay, so let me share my screen. So this one here. So everybody can see my screen with the PowerPoint slide, blank PowerPoint slide, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, this is a title screen. You can use this, but it's better to use a new one. Just insert a new, you can do here and you can say, um, you wanna insert a new slide. So insert a new slide. Usually it's good, either use a blank one or you can use a title one, use a title one, I think. Title one here and just write here, WBS. Yes, which project do you guys wanna use for your WBS? Which project do you wanna prefer? Um, let's do, how about, let's do installation of the cables, okay? Installation of electrical cable. Okay, that's our um, WBS that we need to make. So when you're going to do that, we want to, so um, you could note that down. This is, you click on insert and under insert, we have smart art option. Okay, everyone following me? So under install, under, under the case of that, um, you will be using here the insert smart, smart art. <clears throat> In SmartArt, we're going to use hierarchy. So SmartArt graphic, we will use hierarchy. Is everyone following me? So do we need to do it right now? So, okay, follow along for now, and then we will do it in your breakout rooms. Yeah. Okay, just follow along. So um, make sure you understand what things to click on. Okay, so we're so it's hard to do both the things at the same yeah, time. Yes, sir. Yes, I understand. I know. Okay, so just follow along for now. So I clicked on, so I'm just gonna repeat again uh, under home. Um, so what we're doing is we're clicking on ins insert. Under insert, I went to smart art. Under smart art, I went to hierarchy and I just clicked on the first one, which is org chart. Okay, so under org chart, we have this here, but now I got double and we got one. Okay, so under here, one way is you can type in here that's one way you can do install electric cable. Okay, but, and it will, that's okay, one way to do it. But the other way is to use this box here. If you use this box, it makes it a little bit easier, I think. Um, it's up to you. This is on one side. We don't need this on the one side. I can backspace and I can delete it if I delete it. Or you could right click also and you can delete also. That's the other way. But let's first think about what are the, so what are the different activities you need to do? What are the main, main things you have to do in the electrical ca cable installation? Yes, guys, what is that? Can you remind me? You have it in your deck also. First, you need to define of the, the measurement, of the cable. measurement of the cable. Well, first you need to define the route, don't you? You need to know what is the yeah, route. Sir. Like? Yes, sir. The route and digging okay. up of the... Then what is next? It's and the size of the cable required is for the cable. So measure, so define the route. Do, do you need to get the, so if you order the cable and you don't get the permits, don't you need to get the permits? Do you guys need to get the permits? Yes, sir. Yes, um, page part of? Yes, sir. Yes, permits are required. Okay, yeah. So you need to get the permits, right? Um, permit approval, that's something to do. Right? Yes, yes. Then what else you need to do? Yeah. Then you need to also, so you see, I can I can click enter and then it will delete it. Okay, then what else you need to do? Yeah. So we need to uh, measure the length, right? Measure the length. Yes, sir, and the cross section of the cable required for the cube. Yes, then you can order the material, which will include so the, you order the material, right? Yes. 
then you can also then what else you do then you actually want to then you need to take the channel right yes yes right then you need to um, install the cable right yes okay. and then you need to do what else you need to do test it they will connect and then you need to fill the channel fill the channel and then you need to make the testing the pavement so this is the one level so this is like first level that you have done right if you now when you define the route you click enter and tab it will create a level below okay when you're defining the route you may be you're looking at overall um you're looking at from the from the grid the route will come from the grid right then it will go to also maybe some land which it will go to like those vacant land then maybe it has to cross some water maybe a river it has to cross okay then it has to go to a uh, under the street right maybe you have to cross some streets underneath the street yes. then you go to the factory so the route is going to be defined that way yeah. yes. then the also, who do you need to get permit from you need to get permit from the city client you need to get permit from the community also they will you know you have to the stakeholders they will they have to agree also you have to get approval from maybe the water authority for the river right maybe it's different companies you have to get um, approval from it's not just one right yes. then you have to get approval from so you have to get all those approvals okay then the length of the route you have to measure the length of the route but the length how you will you measure it you have to use um, different means right so the land, and then there's water also okay so see i can okay there's several ways i can make see i want to make this underneath here i can also go over here at home and i can also uh -huh. say okay uh -huh. you want to um so i can go here under home and i can uh -huh. say, I'll say here smart art i can say move down right so if i move down it will uh -huh. make it go down below uh -huh. that right so uh -huh. down move it up you can demote it also demote means below so you want it to go below that right um and water also so this way one way is to do like that but i like to do it this way is better i think here if you do like this way um you can do all right i have to make it go back other way so you can do like that measure the length under water under here yeah this way is a little better <laughs> material. okay so what material do you need yeah what material do you guys need? Do you need the cable? Do you need um, yes, sir. cement? Yes. Do you need um, some equipment? Do you need also, what else you need? Um, okay, so you get the idea. So this way you need to create the, uh, this is the way you can create the WBS using SmartArt. Okay, so can you guys do that on your own? So this is, you see, this is at, at the end, this is what it will look like. So it will look like this way. You can, I know we don't have the numbering here. You can add the numbering, but um, this gives you an idea. Like when you are doing this one, you can do it as one. And then here you have to type it. It's not going to do it automatically. It will be 1.1 and this will be 1.2, right? And so on. So this way you can do it like that 1.3 and so on. Um, and then if you want to do something underneath here, you just put enter and then you click tab. So then it will create it underneath that, right? Um, the other thing is if this is looking like too much wide, the other thing you could do is you can also um, drag this over this way, right? Um, and then this is here and this way. Um, and then you can also the other way you can do it also, you can look at over here. Um, you can switch it over. If you don't like this way, you can make it look like, for example, this way. That could be the other way. It can show like this, okay? 
um, or it can be, you can change the design as you like. So this is here showing you if you want to add pictures, you can add pictures, but so I want you to play around with that. Um, and uh, then it will help you to get a little practice on this. So we'll spend 10 minutes on that. Um, so which, uh, which topic do you want to use? Which, what project, how about you guys use um, installing solar panels? How's that? How about installing solar panels? Is that a good project? Everybody's familiar with that one, right? Let's suppose you have to install solar panels on the rooftop of a home. Is that okay, guys? Hello, anybody there? Yes, sir. Okay. So I only hear one or two people. Everybody else is listening or not listening? Can I see a thumbs up who's listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are listening. Okay, yeah. We're yeah. listening, I'm sir. Three, one or two people are yes. answering. Uh, Jamila Dean, where were you? You just came in. Did you not come back after the break? Yes, uh, where's Jamila Dean? He's. I don't see him on the list. Uh, he was, okay, anyways. So I'm gonna send you to the breakout rooms, please. As everybody okay, you can open this up. I'll come to your breakout rooms and I'll help you. But let's work on this together, three, four people. You will be working in teams, okay? Um, and uh, so you will be working in teams and then you can uh, go ahead and do that, okay? So in this way, then you should be able to practice it on your own. Uh, yes, Jamila Dean, you just joined. Did you not come back after the break? Hello, Jamila Dean. Yes, sir. I was in class only. It was so, my connection problem. I was listening to this smarter. Yeah, you need to stay, you know, in the class. Don't disappear. Yeah, I was in the class only, sir. Uh, it was just the connection problem. So, I told All right. You. Okay, I'm sending you to the breakout room. So, you need to, um, everybody should be able to work on this 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just make a simple. So the, the project is you're installing solar panels on the rooftop of your home, okay? One person can bring up the slides, discuss about it, and uh, let's, uh, you know, then discuss and see what you guys did. Each one will share one picture of what they did, okay? Um, so I'm going to set up the counter timer for so let's do it for like, yeah, 10 minutes approximately. Uh, we don't have to spend too much time on this. So I'll come to your rooms. I'll help you out also. Please get started on it. Okay. So you can go ahead and uh, join the rooms, please. All right. Do you guys see there's a invite for the rooms is coming up? Okay. Let's join those rooms, please. Okay, Dirab, you didn't join a room. Hello, Dirab.
हेलो हेलो पाल हेलो प्रजापति हम तो बना रहे थे अभी तो कर लो अपन बदाम ओके गाइस एवरीवन बैक यस यस सर यस सर वी आर स्टिल मेकिंग फॉर मेकिंग यस सर फिनिशिंग कंप्लीट सो वेरी बैक लेट्स टाइम ओके so that was just a quick you know like um practice for you guys so um anybody want to share so let's see breakout room number 1 yes anybody want to share what they did what was in the breakout room number 1 so we had gurpreet jit kumar prince patel tejesh parak how to share the image we don't know share screen share screen okay Wait a minute. I have to give you access. Just a minute. I have to give you access. So, who is it? Sorry, who is going to share? So, Tej Parker. Tej Parker. Okay. I'm going to make you co-host. Um, and now, do you see the green button for share? Share screen. Yes, sir. Okay, you can share. Okay, everybody. Let's see what they did. Of course, this is very you know quick and you know it's not very, but still it's good. Like in this short ten minutes, you see you just quickly made one. um just only thing is your like when you click on it can you click on it on the left side and the arrow um those find the area area for installation approval from the government those need to go down you need to have at the top you should have one should be installing solar panels right and, and then because... underneath those these should come underneath those right so we we'll make, make it in the horizontal yeah. that's why yes yeah. yeah. okay yeah. but obviously yes. you get the idea that is how you have to set it up using this method okay yes. good thank you thank okay you. let's stop sharing and then the um stop sharing yes, yes um breakout room number 2 fanel jamiluddin mm -hmm. niti ritesh who's going to share sala will sir me sir jamiluddin yeah share my screen fanel you're going to No sir it's me Jamildin I am going to share this okay Jamildin okay wait let me get your access and biometric check so Jamildin there you are okay my co-host okay yes you can see the screen uh, the share screen and then you can show that yes Okay good yes yeah, see so this way they have at the start installation of solar panel and yes that's good so you do site survey do approval requirement of the customer types of material calculating the cost and under the requirement you have what is the load requirement type of panel requirement of battery so these are so think of it these are things you have to do right this is work to do and you can you can give this like the requirement of the customer that is one activity maybe you can make it as a work package that one person can do that the approvals maybe you need to get two or three people to get the approval or maybe you have one person do it so think of it as who will be doing it right then there's actual installation also right who's going to do the installation is it yes, sir. electrical person maybe mechanical person so this is how we're breaking it down right clear good good job yes sir Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. And then the next one is uh, breakout room number three. We had um, Atul Kanjan who wants to share. Yes, out of that team, are you guys done with that? Do you want to share anybody? Yes, Atul Kanjan, Vatsal, Raj. I am going to share, sir. Okay, Atul, let me make you co-host. Okay, yes. Do you see the share screen? Yes, sir. Ah. Okay, good. So you went down to one level, but can you show me how do you make the next level? Can you show me how you do that? If you purchase the material, so if you want to purchase the material for the um electrical and for the mechanical for the like racks can you install how do you how do you add that under purchase the material if you want to add something underneath it how do you do that can you show me hello yes and then what tab sir tab you see the tab where the arrow is uh next to the q next to the q that on your keyboard okay do you see that press the 
arrow button next to the Q, it's a pen tab button. Are you on your laptop? Uh, Atul, can you hear me? Yeah. Do you see on your la on your keyboard, do you see um, where the Q, W, E, R, T, Y is, the row? Yeah. And do you see the tab button there? Yeah. Press that. Okay. There you go. See? This will make it come down. Okay. Sir. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. That is how you have to do underneath that. And then again, if you click again, enter, then again, tab, it will make another one underneath it. And then again, tab. Yeah, so this will come underneath that. So this is, so guys, this is how you have to learn to use this. It's very easy. And then you can also, or you can type also there and then enter it and also bring it. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm going to stop your sharing. Um, who's next? Next group is breakout room number three. Devan Kumar, Digna, Mandeep, Aman. Yes, who wants to share? Sir, I'm sorry, wait. Sorry, who's going to share? It is written there, host disabled participant screen sharing. Naman, sir. sir. Naman is going to share the. Okay, Naman. Okay, All right, let me make you a co host. I don't give you guys sharing screen option. Otherwise, I don't know what you're going to share. You know, something you might share with you. <laughs> right? So I have to give you one by one control. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Here you go, sir. All right, good. Yeah, that looks good. Yes. So just explain to us what you did there. Thank you. Yes, explain. So we are starting from the site survey, uh, yes. in which uh, first of the, we need to calculate the what are the load requirement and the inspection of the area, the roof area. Uh, is it yes. uh, space is available or not? And it is viable to install that or not. And then according to that, uh, they will give the quotation that how much they're going to cost it. Then if they agree, then there is a come from the permit approval permits. So the first of all, the permit from the customer, the client, then the electricity department and the government approvals. Then it comes to the subsidy application because the most of the solar projects are subsidized. So you need to download the application form filled by the customer and the submit to the government and the department. And then after all this was done, there's a procurement of the material. So it's going to be like purchase the solar panel. You're going to purchase the uh, fabrication, uh, that uh, material. So all of this stuff will go to that then further on. But time was right. Better. Okay, good. No, that's good. Yeah, see, so, so as you can see very easily, you can build it like that. And you can even drop down more, you can add other stuff. And then these are the work packages, you can give those to different people to work on, right? Yeah. So and one then thing the next step would be to do the activity network diagram, which will be coming later. Yeah, one yes. thing I just want to ask, uh, yes, how, how to do this numbering stuff? I don't know about that. Yeah, in here you have to do manually in Word it will do it automatically. But in here you have to um, type it yourself in each of those. So when you click on that arrow, so in the arrow, when you click on the left side arrow, um, when you go to the panel, there you have to type the numbers yourself. Yeah, inside here you can put 1.0. Okay, got it. Yeah, and then this one load requirement you have to put here 1.1. Um, yeah. Yes, here you have to put it manually, yes. Mm -hmm. Fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, good. All right, good, thank you. Uh, let's go on to the next group. So that was a good job, yes, I think so far, best one so far. And then the um, breakout room number five, Dhruv, Rick Sumit, and Baba Kumar, who wants to share? So Dhruv. Okay, um, who? Dhruv, sir. Dhruv. Dhruv, okay, all right. Let me make you co-host. Okay, go ahead. Okay, good job. Yes, you want to explain it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for the solar panel construction, we need a project management. Uh, then we uh, need to go for pre-construction. Then we are going for the construction side at post-construction side. For the project management, we have to contact for the contractors who are going to uh, uh, take the contract for building that solar panel on the buildings. Then we have to make the particular project plan for what to do in that uh, uh, in that particular plan. After that, in the pre-constructions, we have to take the particular site survey at how we are going to uh, install that panels and meter agreements on our approval, uh, city permits and drawing design. This is all the simple words that you can uh, get from yeah. the approval from the others. After that, we go to the constructions. Uh, in construction, we have to install the solar panels and electrical system wiring and all that <clears> stuff. 
and wrecking uh, that wire in a particular manner that uh, they are not matched up. Uh, after that post construction, we have to check the solar panels that they are working in a good manner or not, and inspection of all the stuff. So this is all that we are right. making. Good. No, that's good. Also, yes. See, so so see, same project. You can think of it different ways. Like your group think different way. Naman also. So it depends on you. You know this topic very well, you guys. That's why I chose this. So you can break it down into different, and it's good you added product management because that is, yes, that is should be in each of your work breakdown structure because it will take some time. Remember, there are there's initiating, there's planning, there's executing, and then there's closing and monitoring and closing, and controlling. So it will take you some time and effort to do the project charter to make all the project plans, and then you actually can start out working right. So you need to put that also as your one work to do what you did there which is good yes, sir, we are still making that but yeah. it's not that sufficient time to do that sure no problem no, it's good good i know in 10 minutes is good so in 10 minutes you did a good job thank you okay um breakout room number six yes amandeep kaur who wants to share Am me sir arun baby arun okay arun yes okay uh my co-host all right go ahead Okay, good. Yes, you want to explain it? Yes, uh, for installation of solar panel, we just need first a site survey and estimation, and then the approval from the uh, the authorities. Then the installation and testing and commission. For the site survey, we just uh, find out the uh, site and uh, uh, check whether the site is uh, fully with uh, sunlight or something, and yes. uh, any other hazard location or not. Right. And then yes, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, you need to, to check the sunlight also. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Then we are moving to the estimation part. For that, uh, we just calculate the load consumption and uh, uh, total cost of that project. Right. And uh, they will uh, um, then we submit the uh, project to the government and uh, uh, get the approval from the government and the yes, legal authority right. and also from the customer. Right. Uh, then we are moving to the. Uh, installation uh, panel uh, purchase and uh, battery purchase are coming out of that category and uh, we just install that panel cover lundu then we were right. moving to the testing and commissioning department it's uh, from the electrical authority and also from the government right yes good no good job yes that's good also anybody want to add anything anything missing from here yeah we just uh, plan to add more uh, installation uh, there is uh, some more uh, thing will come under the installation right and yes sir so while we are uh, surveying the site we uh, we also do a shadow analysis like uh, we uh, always uh, keep the panel uh, facing south so according to that right yes good no that's good but yeah good effort i mean you see in 10 minutes you guys made these all i think did good job Did you guys learn something new? Was this new for you guys? This uh, using um, the smart art. That was very good actually. Yes. 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 So. I haven't done this, yet earlier. Yeah. Hopefully now you get more competent using you know this tool like smart art and any. This is good for this and any time you want to do any presentation or anywhere you want to show like a diagram. This is very easy to make it here, right? So practice this. You might see in some of my slides also. I use also smart art. I made those. you know breakdowns like that using smart art so any presentation you're doing anything like that you're doing it's very useful so um get used to it i know in your groups maybe one or two person did it if you didn't do it practice it on your own so that's one of your homework to do right so one homework is to practice that on your own because it's useful and then later on you if you do any project anything else then you should be competent in using it okay so it's 2:30 so what, do you guys have any homework to do Yes sir. Yes, what is your homework? Who wants to tell we me? We have a quiz next week. That's yeah. the homework. Yes, that's good. I'm glad that's good, right? So we have quiz next week. So till when is it? So all everything I covered today, right? So we finished at types of schedule, right? The milestone plan, the summary schedule, and this, you know, a Gantt chart. So up till here, this is all this material you should know. For, so any so the questions can come from there. So it's probably going to be 20 questions 
um, online, you know, multiple choice probably. Um, I haven't made it final yet, but I'm working on that. Um, so it's going to be 20 questions there. There may be one written answer you have to give maybe a little bit. I want to see your writing um, competency also. So there may be one written question. Um, so this is 20% of your mark. So please prepare for that. And then, like I said, again, the next week, we're going to talk about doing critical path, other further more discussion about schedule. We'll talk about that next week. And then there will be an exercise on that the week after, right? Um, so we, we are going to have our study also, of course, next week. And then after the class, I will open up the quiz for about till evening. I'll keep it open anytime when you have time, do it. it and the questions will come from a question bank. So not everybody's going to have the same questions. There will be, I think, uh, around 40 questions. From there, you get 20 random samples. So your questions will not be the same as your friends. So don't rely on your friends. Please, we need, you know, this is more of an honor system. The purpose is you should be, you know, if you're going to share, if you're going to be having like, you know, not focusing on yourself, then it's just going to hurt you, nobody else. Um, please try to understand these this information. If you plan to go in the real world, these are very important things to know and you want to be competent in it. Um, so for your career, of course, it is good for you to understand these things and get familiar with them. So we will have that next week. And then we will also have the, um, yeah, and then of course, like I said, you have that and then we'll have calculations after that next week. An assignment, I will give you some numerical questions. Um, I'll do some, we'll do some examples in class, of course. Then I will give that to you, some calculations you have to do, and then you have to upload your answers on the Dropbox. Okay, and that'll be for the next week. And then after that, you have your midterm also. So I need you guys all to please be serious about your studies um, and uh, make best use of this also um, in this case, right? Sir, I have um, a little query. Yes. These slides are enough for the quiz? Slides are enough for passing the quiz. If you wanna get 100%, then you should be reading in the book also. There may be a few questions which come from the book. So um, this is just good for passing. If you just wanna get 60, 70%, then it's okay. But if you wanna get 90, 100%, then you should be reading in the book. Uh, and the quiz will be in the beginning of the lecture? At the end. At the end. Can't be it in the beginning? Why in the beginning? Why do you want in the beginning? You don't want to study that day? I want to- No, 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 no. Like... We won't study that day just for- uh... No, I don't understand you, but no, it's going to be at the end. Uh, so we will study and then at the end of the class, I will open it up then. Okay. So um, any other question? Okay, as so- you, As you earlier mentioned that it is an open book test too. Yes, it is open book because I'm not sitting next to you. I can't see what you're doing, right? Um, I'm not sitting next to you, so it is open book. But you will have limited time. It will only be like, so if it's 20 questions, you will only have 20 minutes to do it. Only one minute per question. In the one minute, you have to think about it, understand it, and it's you cannot check each and every question from the notes. It's not that easy. You will not have enough time to check all the answers in your notes. It'll be so, limited time. So, sir, all the questions, uh, the MCQ based? Uh, yes. Short they will questions all be multiple too. Choice. They okay. will all be multiple choice right. or, okay. yes, or true and false. Thank you. But one will be written maybe. I said I haven't finished it yet. One may be a written question where you have to answer um, a question, but most of it will be multiple choice for answers like the right one or true false. Okay. Because there is a least time. That's why I ask. Yes. Uh, there will be limited time though. Um, so please don't rely on its open book. I've taken open book tests and open book tests are harder than other ones because you're relaxed. Oh, it's okay. I'll check it online. I'll check it. And then you're going to be in trouble. Time will run out. You won't know where to look for. You don't know that you don't understand the question. You don't know where it is in the book or in the, in the notes and you will lose the time. So open book tests are not that easy. I assure you. And uh, some questions you will not find the answer in the book word for, I mean, in the notes, uh, word for word, they may be mentioned in a different way. So 
don't think that open book tests are easier. It's possible to fail an open book test too. Okay. Uh, sir? Yes. It is in the beginning of the class or end of the class? I already mentioned it's at the end of the class. End of the class. Okay, so I will give you some time. Like, I will keep it open for like um, till evening. If you don't want to do it right away, you can do it later on. But uh, you need to do it by the end of the day. So it, once we're done, like 2.30 this time, 2 o'clock after studying, then I'll open it up probably till 6 p.m., maybe 8 p.m. I'll open till 8 p.m. You do it anytime you want to. Okay? If you're late, then you're late, then you get zero. That's it. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, any other question? I think, have you guys, you've taken tests for the other section one uh, in your term one, right? You've taken online tests, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same way, so same way, nothing new. I think it's not nothing new for you guys, right? Were those also open book tests, the ones you did before? But the time is so limited, Only sir. one subject was open book, that was electrical code. The time was what? The time is so limited. Yes. 20 question point, 20 minutes. It's too hard. That's, yeah, usually that's how it is. We're supposed to, that's what we're told. We should keep like one minute. And it's over 20 percentage. Yes. Yes, that's true. We'll see. I'm still working on it. I'll see. I'll let you guys know. But the purpose is, if you know your course, it should be very easy. It should not be difficult if you attended the classes. And if you've been spending time on looking at the course, and if you spend time every week, if you've done one hour, two hours study after the class, it will not be difficult. But if you have not, then it will be difficult. Simple as that. And the purpose is, everybody should not get 100%. And everybody should not fail, right? Those who have done their effort, they will get a good grade. And those who have not done the effort, it will be reflected in the result. That's the purpose, right? In class, in class that you taught, it is, uh, it is sufficient because uh, if we are hearing, uh, if you if do 100% class, then it is okay. I just, are you not listening? I just repeating again. I have to repeat again. <laughs> I think you're not listening. I already mentioned to you, if you want to just get 60, 70%, then the course in the in the PowerPoint is enough. If you attend the classes, you should be able to pass. But if you want to get 90 or 100%, then you need to have extra study. Don't depend only on the class, okay? And I told you already, you have to study on your own. You cannot just come to class two hours and expect that I'm gonna get 100%. That will not work that way. Okay, I want all of you to get 100%, but from what I see, I don't think everybody will get 100% because there's different people having different. Um... Okay, so let's call the day, and then I, those of people I asked to stay behind, please. Um, uh, Manideep, Hiral, and Kanjan, I need you to stay behind. Other people can go, and uh, yes, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Okay, bye. Okay, um, so we have uh, I'm going to discuss with you one by one, you guys. Let me see if everyone's going okay. So Hiral, you're there. Manideep, you're there. And uh, Kanjan, we're, yeah, Kanjan, you're there also, right? Um, I'm going to put Kanjan, are you there? Manideep? Yes, sir. I'm going to put you in the waiting room for a few minutes. Just so I'll get you in, in two, three minutes, five minutes. Sir, may, may I leave, sir? Okay, um, Naman, yeah, it's okay. You don't need to be here. You can go down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank oh, you. Have a nice day. See you next week. Okay, I'm going to put you in the waiting room, Manideep. Um, Hiral, are you there? Kanjan? Yes, sir. I'm going to put you... Okay, yes, Kanjan, are you there? Yeah. I'm going to put one of you in the waiting room, and I'll bring you back in a few minutes, okay? All right. Okay. Yes, Hiral. Um, so I was looking at your performance in terms of your access. So... Um, you only did like five, 10 minutes of study. Like, are you having any trouble with your study? Uh, 
anything uh, i can do actually in the last week uh, the all things are messed up because we are moving to, we are changing our house and uh, due to the in the last house we had a problem bed bug problem and that's why uh, two or three days uh, i spent on it and after that i i joined the new job so manager asking for like uh, in the beginning of the class i was i, I was at job and i was uh, running uh, running out from the uh, bus stop to home that's why i just say yes sir louder <laughs> and uh, because i want to catch uh, catch up on the class and it's ha happening all all that so i cannot focus on study last week okay. but i will focus uh, in this week Yes. So now you're all settled. Now everything is okay. Yeah. You moved and everything. Yes. 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 Okay. Sir. Good. Yeah. I just want to make sure, like, there's no like other issue, anything I can help you yeah, with. Yeah. I ju I just check it out uh, just last uh, last uh, night. Yes. Uh, at twelve thirty or twelve. Yeah. I know because I checked yesterday and you haven't you didn't do anything. Yes. So. Yes. I just check it out uh, uh, at twelve thirty or yes. because I just came from the job by eleven thirty. Yes. So, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good. So please now you know spend some time go through it. And uh, yeah, be prepared next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. So this won't be ha happen again. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. I just want to ask if there's anything I can do. Yes, okay. Sir, yes, sir. Thank you. That's fine. You can go then. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right. Okay. Hello. Hi, Kanjan. Hi. Hi. Hi, Kanjan. Yes, I want to ask you. Actually, I saw you didn't do the quiz. Uh, the you know compliance quiz till yesterday. So was there a problem? Why didn't you do it before? Actually, sir, I recently moved out from my house, so I was busy in moving the stuffs and arranging it. So I will I'll surely do it today. Yeah, like see, everybody has done except for two people, and you're one of them. I don't understand. Like it's now third week, and in third week you have not you have not gone to any content. You have not, you know, looked at anything at all. Only like. One minute you only looked at the e-text. That's it. So, I'm really concerned about your performance and the way you're like studying. This is not acceptable. Okay, sir. Sorry about that, but I will be surely studying it's well. It's going to be very difficult if you're like you're three weeks behind, and now I'm going ahead. I'm going to do fourth week, and if you don't study, then you it's going to be very difficult for you to cover everything for four weeks and five weeks. I need you every week to study. One to two hours every week. I need you to do the quiz. When are you going to do the quiz? All right now, sir. Yeah, and I need you to study. I can, you know, I showed you before. You know, I can see everything, right? Did you were you in the last class? Yes, sir. You know, I can see everything you're doing on Econostoga, and um, and you're like you only you looked at nothing basically. You haven't even logged in. You only logged in once or twice only. So I'm really concerned about that. You, I know you're moving, but are you settled now? Is everything okay now? Yes, sir. I'm not right now settled. Okay. All right. So um, I'll look forward to your cooperation. If there's anything else, if any problem, then you know, talk to your student success advisor because then otherwise you could have trouble later on with the course. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye. Bye. How much? Hello, Manideep. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm good. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Yes, I wanted to ask you. Like, you didn't do the quiz. You didn't. Uh, you didn't access any of the information on the class. Is there something like problem? Anything I can help you with? No, sir. It's all good. So what I thought was there is another thing called as academic integrity outside, like outside the course box. So I thought that is what I'm supposed to do. So I finished that and I didn't check about the. Academic integrity test in the course information. So, so you don't have any friend in the class? Nobody you're talking to? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's what I did. So once I figured it out, I went into the content and course, and then I finished the academic integrity. Yeah. So you have to finish. So I saw you just did it now at eleven forty-five a.m. Yes, sir. You just did it today, right? Yes, sir. See, I I showed you last time. You can see my screen, right? Can you see yes, I can see your screen. So I can see like you, you, I checked yesterday, you didn't do anything. And today you just, in the morning at 11.47, you just did the quiz. You just click, 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 three second, five second, five second, 10 second, one minute. This is not what I want, okay? Three weeks, you did not do anything. And you just accessed it now this morning. 
and you're three weeks behind. I'm really concerned about that. So how are you going to catch up? Okay, uh, let me be honest with you. Uh, so in this couple of weeks, I was just caught up with some work because for the first three months, I had no work. So I recently got a temporary job. And so that's what kept me busy for these weeks. And from this week, kind of like I just, I'm just going to get some cutoff hours like they don't need me anymore. So I guess I'm free from now. So from now on, I'll make sure that I'll finish my work up to date. Like, so, you know, number one is, so what visa are you on here? What is your visa? Yes, sir. Student visa. And student, student visa. Time. Student visa, your number one priority should be your study. Okay. Yes, You're the reason for coming here is study. Number two is, yes, you have a job. I know there's expenses. I know it's not easy to get a job these days. I know those, but your study should not interfere with your work, with your study. Your, sorry, your work should not interfere with your study. That's a requirement from the college. And you know that it should not be affecting your study. If you've not touched your course in three weeks, every single week I've been requesting you to go on and look at it. You've not done that. It means that you are not focused on your studies at all. So it's That's not fair. It, it makes no difference to me, but it's gonna be affecting you a lot. Now, we have three weeks of work to study, to review in a very detailed manner, at least three hours of study you'll do one hour. We're only requesting you one hour a week. There's 168 hours in a week. If you can't study one hour a week or two hours a week, I don't know, like there's no excuse at all. Even if you have a job, you have a job, you have other things to do, you need to find one to two hours a week. That's all you need to do. There's not a lot of material. So can I ask you for your cooperation in the future? Sure, sir. From now on, I'll make sure that I'll... Yeah, my objective is to get you to understand all these things. And I need your cooperation. I can see everything you're doing here on Econostoga. And uh, only two people have not done the quizzes, have not accessed the course. Um, and other people have done most of the, you know, they're up to speed. So I'm really concerned about your performance and your how you'll be able to catch up. So I need you to send, spend more time and it's no excuse about work. Yes, sir, I make, there's no excuse. I know it's uh, my duty to, you know, yes, learn about the things. And yeah. it's a three hour class, a three hour course, right? Yes, two sir. hours we're teaching, one hour you have to study on your own. If you do two hours, that's great. That's it. Two hours class, two hours study in a whole week, 168 hours, only four hours you have to do on this course. And same thing for the other ones. So please, I need your cooperation and it'll be, you know, I want everyone to pass, understand. It's not just pass, understand the concepts, apply them. Your engineer probably gonna use these things in your work and everything. You don't wanna do, do you wanna work all your life in Walmart or any like jobs like those? You don't wanna work at Tim Hortons or Walmart all your life, right? Yes. You wanna go an engineering job, right? So you will probably be using these things in engineering. So please, let's focus on it, okay? Yes, all sir. Right. Yes. All right, anything I can help you with? Any Anything else? No, sir. That's all. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys next week then. All right, sir. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye.